Hey, Ricky, how are you? I'm doing I'm doing good. No one's really it. I swear I haven't asked you that before. <laughs> no one's really asked me like that before. That, that No one gen genuinely hasn't asked me. They've always said something else. All right, let's jump, jump into it. No one said, hey, how are you? Well, I, you know, I like to be nice before I hit you with some hard stuff here, but <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, you have a big match on Sunday versus Chris Jericho. So firstly, what has it been like working this program with Jericho over the past couple of months? Um, you know, being in a feud with Jericho has been, uh, it's had its ups and downs for me personally, just because the stuff with the JS and, you know, I won, I beat Jericho in Seattle and then I had to deal with being put through a table, you know, that type of stuff. So, um, it, it's fluctuated for me, but I think overall it's a great learning point for me, at least, to understand um, exactly how to navigate somebody like Chris. And I think it's it's a big point for me to beat him again because I did it once and I can do it again. If I do it again, then that means I can be that much closer to becoming the AW you know World Champion. I, I get moved up uh, in, in the line. So um, I've learned that Chris is very very calculated in the way that he thinks and the way that he kind of sees things. So taking those bits from him and being able to utilize it for myself has done me wonders. And then of course, you know, when we're barring back and forth on, on the microphone, it's a good little feather in my cap to know that I can stand shoulder to shoulder with Chris, which there was never any doubt in my head, but yeah. to actually go out there and prove it on a platform, it's it's helped me out tremendously yeah was that important for you because like you're known for cutting such great promos and you're you're kind of like like finally you know opposite someone that's kind of on the level and was like he someone that influenced you when you were younger thinking about promos and how you'd present yourself well no jericho didn't influence me when i was younger um really so to honestly being on that level of being in the same ring with Chris and going back and forth on the mic is a big deal to me because it is a proving point, just how it was with MJF, where people didn't really um, think of other people beyond these guys because you just see them all the time on TV, cutting promos. So when I get in there and I actually go back and forth, to me, that's a very great thing for me. And I take it with a lot of pride and I take it very seriously because I necessarily don't get those opportunities all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But to be a younger fan, to look at myself now and to see, you know, me going back and forth with the Jericho is honestly the funniest thing. Because even when I was like 12 or 11, I was cutting these promos in the mirror and talking trash to you know, all types of, you know, superstars. So um, it's just crazy to, to see it realized in such a fashion of being, you know, at AEW. Yeah. Uh, a while ago, you did some commentary on Rampage, so you were next to him then. Did you get any, I, like, genesis of an idea of how you could bring some of your, like, uh, interaction onto an actual TV feud? From from the Rampage stuff? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, no, not really, because I think that was just a natural progression of two guys going back and forth, uh, yeah. you know, especially on Rampage, no less. I do think that that probably set the scene for things of what could be down the line uh, between me and him. Uh, and if anything, I think it showed him like, hey, I'm not a, a young guy that's a pushover. Like, I'm just as witty as they come. So, you know, be prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like for you doing commentary during that time? Did you enjoy it? I did. I did. So at the time I was, you know, dealing with the process of the injury and all that stuff. And then after the injury, I was still doing the commentary a bit. Um, there are things about commentary that I don't think a lot of people think about in terms of the challenges that you face having to, you know, think on your feet as quickly as you can say certain things to help enhance the wrestling match um, and do it in such a small, limited space. And mm -hmm. so I learned quite a bit from Pat, Excalibur, Tony Giovanni, even sitting next to Chris, even Jim Ross. So I learned a lot in such a short period that I don't think that I, I think I took it for granted at the time. Now looking back on it, it was an amazing opportunity because 
I've used a lot of the, the tools that I found out about certain uh, getting this number or saying this line or trying to get in in 20 seconds. I learned a lot of those and I utilize that still to this day. So overall, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, I just wish at the time I would have saw it. Not that I didn't, but I just I wish I would have said, okay, I need to enjoy it because this could go away really soon. Yeah. That's it, thinking. Yeah. So um, part of your program right now has been Action Andretti as well. He's um, really new and uh, he's got quite the um, push right now. So for you, what's it like working with him, someone like, that's so new to all this? And, and kind of like, what do you like see in him that made him the one that like got this uh, push? You know, I, I see, I, I, honestly, I, at one point I was just like Action. Like I was just a young dude trying to, find my way basically and not a lot of people were willing to help and so I, I i think it's important to help people that want to be helped obviously um action is a very man he's very talented i i, I just saw his performance um in the revolution ladder match and i was just blown away like there's so many things to him that i don't think we've even seen or even scratched the surface with and he's uh he's an extremely extremely talented person mm -hmm. and he's a He's so funny too. He's, he's a really funny, but also like kind of quiet, somewhat. Like he, he listens more than he speaks. Yeah, and that's that's a cool trait to have as well, especially you know in, in this industry. Yeah, but it's been good to have some at, at my side. You know, um, I give him a pointer here and there, and he takes it to heart. So that's really cool. Yeah, is he okay after that ladder match? It was crazy last night. I saw him limping around. I think he's going to be good. You know. Oh. They, they bounce back as quick as they go out there and go crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I think he'll be all right. Cool. Um, so it has been like a crazy few months. You mentioned the MJF stuff before. So what was that like for you, you know, winning the Battle Royal in Texas and then going on to face him in Texas? And what did it like mean for you to do that program at that time and in that place? Honestly, the the matchup. So I won the match in uh, in Austin. I won the battle royal in Austin, and then that's when I had the subsequent uh, promo. And then the next week, I had the match in. So I think it was a cool moment for me because leading up to that, I had a lot of like, you mm -hmm. know, ebbs and flows of, of where my career, the people in the office, to everyone watching at home, exactly just who the hell I am, what I'm about, and where I see myself ultimately. The match didn't go as planned as I wanted to with Max. Um, obviously I didn't win, so there's that. But that's why I'm so keen on beating Chris Jericho again, just so that way I can get myself right back up to the front of the line to yeah. contend for the title once more. Mm -hmm. So before that, um, you and Powerhouse Hobbs were, were feuding and you had the match at All Out that was really short. And then, I mean, at the, at the time, there were a lot of people kind of just confused and wondering why uh, and rumors and stuff. So do you kind of have a, a reason why like it was so short? I know you went on to win like, the Lights Out match, but was there like a thinking behind that? So the Lights Out match happened um, in New York at uh, Arthur Ashe. Yeah. After the all out pay per view, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, you know, the, the match was what it was. Um, I, I really don't know what to say, you know, about it in terms of, of the length. Uh, I mean, I didn't, obviously, I would have liked it to be a little bit different, of course. Um, as me winning, obviously, I wish I would have won. <laughs> but match length, yeah, that, you know, I can definitely see how people um, were. A little bit missed by it but these are things that are out of my control and you know you just kind of you just kind of go with it and throw it behind you and move on mm -hmm. yeah um Hobbs he had a great victory last night you know he won the, the ladder match and how do yeah. you evaluate your time together working with him and how you might have helped each other get to the place you're in now damn that's a good question uh, I think the time that we had together was very valuable in the sense of it was very bootstrapped. And what I mean by that is me and Hobbs went out there and we did it on our own. We got what we wanted out there on our own. The people fell in love with us on our own. You get what I mean? Yeah. And there's a lot of that in my career. And there's a lot of that in Hobbs' career, too, where we're doing it on our own. We're doing it by ourselves. And I think that is what people 
can appreciate the most. So taking that time and now utilizing it in a single, you know, type um, environment has only done us wonders. I thought it was cool that he won in his hometown. Finally, that that if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that's Hobbs's um, second time being in a maybe third time. I'm not sure. But it's more than once that he's been in that type of match. The, the other time, me, me, being, um, me and him were in the same match in uh, Florida for Revolution, where yeah. we're low one. Yeah. So it's cool to see him now at that point. And I think the time that we had together where he leaned on me for certain things and I leaned on him for certain things has only helped us grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. Do you um, feel like Team Taz and at things at the right time? Huh. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think, I mean, I wouldn't have wanted someone to turn on me like that, but um, I guess there's a time for everything. And so maybe that was it. Maybe that was the, the moment that we needed. So I did have to ask you, you were seen uh, at the Royal Rumble with Cody. Um, so why was it important for you to be there with him on that uh, night? <laughs> you, your question today, I honestly, I applaud you. You have some, you have a, you have some really big cojones. Um, <laughs> I, it, it was important to me because, and that's my friend. That's a guy who has helped me out through a neck injury. That's a guy who has helped me out through my career, even even before AEW, yeah. even before AEW, when I was an extra at SmackDown, this guy talked to me and gave me advice when he didn't have to. When I was on the indies, I had ran into him. That That is what's important. I don't give a shit, and I want everyone who's watching this to do this verbatim. I don't give a shit if there's some tribalism uh, from the fans. I don't care if someone from my company or over there thinks it's a bad look. I don't give a fuck. That is my friend. And one thing about me is I'm genuinely going to be a friend no matter what. And if you ride for me, I'm gonna ride for you. So it's important that I go there and see a guy who is ultimately on the biggest chapter. It was important for me to be there because I would want the same damn thing for someone to come and, and just support me that way. I had no, everyone wants to know about this like i said i don't care what tribalism happens from the fans from the people i work with over there it was important for me to go and support my friend um on one of the biggest nights of his life because that's what friends do and if there's one thing about me is that i'm a genuine down ass person that will ride for my friends and nobody will question me for that and i refuse to let anybody question me uh or, or even try to give me any type of pushback on it because I'm a grown ass person. I can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned there, Cody, supporting you through your uh, injuries. So how like are you physically with the injuries that you've had now? How are you feeling? Well, let's let's correct it, Stephanie. I don't want to say injuries because that implies that I've had more than injuries. And contrary to whatever you hear, I've only had one injury in my entire life. And I may be a little spicy about it because I have people who say that I'm constantly injured. I've only had one injury and that wasn't even, that was not due to me. Yeah. Um, that was my neck. My neck feels great right now. Mm -hmm. I uh, feel really, really good. I've been doing a lot of PT still, uh, yoga, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm even far beyond that I needed to just because I want to keep up the, you know, the maintenance of it and make sure that I'm still performing at the best of my ability. Today, I feel just as good as I did, you know, the months before, um, before my neck injury. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, so we've seen you tease that you may have a clothing brand. Uh, what what is the uh, what's going on there? Are you bringing out some of well, your clothes? Well, it's my small little step into. Um, my you know, clothing brand there's nothing crazy or anything like that but i'm trying to push for more of a luxury street wear um so once i get the online shop set up uh, it'll be more of a, a boutique fashion which what i mean by that is like small pieces small limited pieces that um, may drop in like different batches but that's what i'm working on so far and i think that's a pretty cool venture mm -hmm. just because it's something within my playground that i i want to see um 
if there's some type of entry to it, you know. <clears throat> How much do you think, um, like ex expanding your Ricky Starks brand outside of wrestling, like so clothing? Do you think about acting or other stuff? Can you that that you can do? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. God. Oh yeah. Honestly, the only limitation that I may have is just this. It's my my own my own, yeah. you know, brain. Um, definitely getting into acting. Uh, I, I, that's a big thing for me. Getting to acting, getting into some type of hosting, I'd like to host. I'd like to go on different uh, guest by uh, these guest interview shows, hot ones being one of them. So I, there's a lot of things that I'd like to do and that I will accomplish. Uh, it's just a matter of getting through the wrestling portion first and, and you know, just accomplishing what I want to in wrestling. And then one day just being like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Which is going to be yeah. best probably for me ever to say that. Like, all right, I'm done with wrestling because I love wrestling so much. Yeah. Um, so they've announced you this AW All Access reality show, and like you weren't one of the, the main names listed in it, but you did a bit like you won the road to the top a bit. Um, how was that like being featured in a show like that? And was that something you're into or? Yeah. Or not? I, 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 doing Rose to the Top was really fun. I thought it gave um, the viewers another chance to see another side of me. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. beyond just the AEW wrestling shows. I had a really fun time and I, I really enjoyed doing it actually. I had a lot of fun. I know that sometimes the, yeah. the schedule for those can be pretty grueling, but for me personally, I I had a blast. Yeah. Um, and finally, so Revolution 2021, you had your cinematic match with Sting uh, and Darby. Can I just like, what, what was that like? A, working with Sting and then B, in such an unusual circumstance so of creativity and strangeness that was one of the coolest things i've ever done honestly and i think too was working with sting was just mind-blowing still is mind-blowing the fact that um this was a, a person of that caliber who's his first match back basically in like i don't know eight years at the time coming back and doing a cinematic match and doing it way better i still believe it's one of the it is the best cinematic match in wrestling I don't care what anyone says. Uh, and it was great to work side by side with Darby because I make my own vignettes. Darby makes his, his own vignettes too. And it was good to have that collaboration. Um, I, I definitely collaborated with my ideas and he collaborated with his ideas and, and et cetera, et cetera, on making sure that was the best thing that all of us collectively could put out there. And my only, my only criticism of that entire match it's just I wish there was no commentary over it. I just yeah. wish they never had commentary over it. But that's okay. It still lives within itself. And I believe you can actually buy the DVD of that pay review and there is no commentary. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, Ricky. Oh, it's Absolutely. been really